ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه وخليله بلغ الرسالة وادى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وكشف الله به الغمة وجاهد في سبيل الله حق جهاده حتى اتاه اليقين اللهم لك الحمد كله ولك الشكر كله وإليك يرجع الأمر كله على نيته وسره فأهل أنت أن تحمد وأهل أنت أن تعبد وأنت على كل شيء قدير فيا نعم المولى ويا نعم النصير غفرانك ربنا وإليك المصير I commence by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as he should be praised and I bear witness that there is no other deity other than him subhanahu wa ta'ala and that he is the only one worthy of worship and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his final prophet and messenger we ask you Allah to give salutations upon him upon his household and upon his companions and those who followed the footsteps until the day of judgment and make us among them Allahumma ameen my dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam my brothers and sisters in faith my brothers and sisters in humanity and my fellow Americans I greet you all with peace assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh today my speech is about the world today from a police officer's perspective from the police officer's point of view. The world today, my brothers and sisters, is going through a plague, a pandemic, and our country is not except, exempted from this social unrest, for this injustice, and from, from this plague that is going on. Before I continue, I wanna ask the Almighty God to have his mercy upon those who have passed away, and to cure those who are sick, and to bring ease and comfort to our hearts, our households, our families, and more important, to our beloved country. Officials declared upon citizens, and they decreed upon citizens, to shelter in place and take the precautions that are much needed to save lives, our lives, your lives. Some countries have done a great job. Some countries have done less than that. And some countries have done very poorly in fighting this pandemic. Many people have died. Many people continue to die every day. And many people in the millions are getting affected. And the numbers are on the rise. In our country, we have had a lot of success. But unfortunately, we are getting back to worse than we were before. Now the cases in Dallas County are four times more than they were when this thing started. We are, and we have taken this ordeal for granted, and we have not paid any attention to it as we needed to, and now we are paying the price. When the plague of Amwas, if you look it up in the history, at the time of the companions of the Prophet Wasallam, when it started, they followed the advice of him, peace be upon him, and they, nobody that was in town where the plague was left, and nobody that was outside the land where the plague was entered and that's how they saved lives and this is the way that it should be everywhere but we're not following this advice people want to go to the beaches and they want to go to restaurants and they want to go to bars churches messages as if everything was normal and like nothing was you know wrong in the world but let me tell you everything is not normal people are dying and people are getting sick and people are getting infected every day we have seen a decrease in reported crime as law enforcement. But when they are reported, they are much more violent than they ever were. And crashes on the highways are much more fatal than they ever were before. Ask anybody who works in the towing business. When they show up on a crash, right now they're showing up on more fatalities. We are showing up to more fatalities than we ever did before the pandemic. Because people are taking advantage of the free freeways, the empty highways and they're accelerating, and they're doubling and tripling the, the legal speed limit, and crashes are going on, and people are dying in result of this recklessness. Families are fighting over little things that we don't see, we, don't, we didn't used to see much of, and it's getting worse, and it will continue to do so until we have the right mindset and have the patience and the wisdom. These two have to exist in each one of us if we want to win this. We are all in this together as one. And those two, wisdom and the patience, are much more needed now than they were ever before. I'm not a medical expert, 
nor do I have the medical background. But what I want to call upon people to do is to take matters very seriously and to be wise and to be patient until this pandemic goes away. Now, the question is, when do you think this is gonna happen? Like many people ask, the answer is the sooner we comply, the sooner we do, then the sooner it does. This is just the reality of it. There's not a date on this. There's not when this is gonna happen or anything like that. Unless we start, then it goes away. When we lose it, this patience and this wisdom, we lose the sense of being a rational human being. And we become uh, some of those or one of those that rush to, into conclusions and we become judgmental. The, same very, the very same thing that we tell people not to be and this very same thing that our leaders, we don't want them to be judgmental and rush into conclusions. The same thing that we don't want imams or priests or, or to rush into conclusions. The same thing that we don't want our community leaders and community figures to judge to rush into is judgment and to rush into conclusions that are going to be bad once everything settles or be bad from the get go when we lose our patience and our wisdom we lose our values our values in the religious aspect and the patriotic aspect a lot of people are charged emotionally nowadays and they express that emotion in the wrong way and when that happens, then nothing matters to us anymore. Not even our country that we love or that we are supposed to love dearly and give and sacrifice everything we have for. America and the world today in the eyes of police officers. In the past few weeks and more, our country has been suffering. And I'm not talking about only the COVID-19 pandemic, but I'm talking about or I'm including also the political situation, the racially charged unrest, the attacks on police officers, the uh, hate and animosity that's going on, the fueling of riots and lootings and supporting and encouraging destruction and the racial unrest as a whole in general. While no one is perfect and while nothing is perfect, we can all work together on becoming as close to perfect as we could possibly be. The question is, do we want to? And this is a question that I'm asking each one of us. Do we want to? Now, in my speech, I am not addressing or, or targeting or discussing a specific particular case in its own merits because not my area. I was not there at those places, but I can speak in general from my perspective. But before I continue this, I want to send a message out to our fellow Americans and in the world. On behalf of my fellow police officers everywhere, who are just people like you, who have families just like you, who want to go home at the end of the shift just like you, who have feelings and fears and struggles just like you, who bleed and have children and they have everything that you have just like you, the police, my fellow Americans, brothers and sisters, have this thing called the code of ethics. And if I may recite it to you so you can understand what we stand for and what we are supposed to be standing for. As a law enforcement officer, my fundamental duty is to serve the community, to safeguard lives and property and protect the innocent against deception, the weak against oppression and or intimidation and the peaceful against violence or disorder, and to respect the constitutional rights of all liberty, equality, and justice. I will keep my private life unsullied as an example to all, and will behave in a manner that does not bring dis discredit to me or to my agency. I will maintain courageous calm in the face of danger, scorn or ridicule, develop self-restraint, be consistently mindful of the welfare of others. Honest in thought and deed, both in my personal and official life, I will be an exemplary in obeying the law and the regulations of my department. Whatever I see or hear of a confidential nature or that is confined 
to me in my official capacity will be kept ever secret unless revelation is necessary in the performance of my duty. I will never act officiously or permit personal feelings, prejudices, or uh, political beliefs, or aspirations, animosities, or friendships to influence my decisions. With no compromise for a crime and with relentless prosecution of criminals, I will enforce the law courteously, without fear or favor, malice or ill will, never employing unnecessary force or violence, and never accepting gratuities. I recognize the badge of my office as a symbol of public faith, and I accept it as a public trust to be held so long as I am true to the ethics to the ethics of police service. I will never engage in acts of corruption or bribery, nor will I condone such acts by other police officers. I will cooperate with all legally authorized agencies and their representatives in the pursuit of justice. I know that I alone am responsible for my own standard of professional performance and will take every reasonable opportunity to enhance and improve my level of knowledge and competence. I will constantly strive to achieve these objectives and ideals, dedicating myself before God to my chosen profession, law enforcement. This is what's called the code of ethics. Racial discrimination. The first person that I know of that had abolished racism and dismantled slavery was our beloved Prophet Muhammad Wasallam, And he said, there is no one better than another. No white over black, no black over white, no red over yellow, none of this stuff, except for whoever has more piety in his heart. And I quote where God says, يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ إِنَّا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ مِنْ ذَكَرٍ وَأُنْثَىٰ وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ شُعُوبًا وَقَبَائِلًا لِتَعَرَفُوا إِنَّا أَكْرَمَكُمْ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَتْقَاكُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَلِيمٌ خَبِيرٌ O people, we are created from man and woman, and we made you tribes and, and, and nations, so you may know one another. And the best of you, the sight of God, is the one who has more, heart, more in his heart, more piety in his heart. And how do we know that? God is the one who is knowing, all-knowing, and all-expert. And the Prophet also said that there is no favoritism for an Arab over an un-Arab, or a white over a black, or a black over white, except for piety in his heart. And then he said, as your God is one, and as your Father is one, there is no favoritism for uh, uh, an Arab over an un-Arab, or a non-Arab over an Arab, or a red over black, or black over red, except when it comes to piety in the heart. And this is why one of the most famous scholars, Ibn Taymiyyah, says, وَلِهَذَا لَيْسَ فِي كِتَابِ اللَّهِ آيَةٌ وَاحِدَةٌ يَمْدَحُ فِيهَا أَحَدًا بِنَسَبِهِ or وَلَا يَذُمُّ أَحَدًا بِنَسَبِهِ وَإِنَّمَا يَمْدَحُ الْإِيمَانَ وَالتَّقْوَى وَيَذُمَّ بِالْكُفْرِ وَالْفُسُوقِ وَالْأَسْيَانِ That God does not, in His holy book, or in any book, glorify certain people because of their relatives and their ancestors. And He does not condemn anyone because of that same reason. But He condones and He encourages piety and faith. And He condemns disbelief and going off His way and disobeying Him. Uh, before you judge me and before you say that I'm just saying this because I'm wearing this uniform, let me ask you all a question and this goes out to every one of you. If you were a Muslim and if you existed at the time of September 11th, would you like or do you like to be labeled as a terrorist? The answer is no. How did you feel and how were you treated post 9-11? How did you get treated if you were Muslim and you were black at the time? Would you like to be stereotyped? If you were of certain uh, uh, creed or race or uh, whatever political uh, affiliation or orientation, do you like to be judged because of that belief? The answer is absolutely not. The same thing when it comes to race, when it comes to background, when it comes to any profession, when it comes to any kind of, of job or, or career that somebody may have, nobody likes to be judged because of the fact that one person did something and then now we're labeling everybody to be the same exact way. This is not fair and this is not justice. Now, the question is for me, do I want to better myself? I strive every day to do so. Do we as a whole, as a community, want to better ourselves? Yes. Do we as a profession in law enforcement want to better ourselves? The answer is yes. We always go out there and we train. We're always sent to training. A lot of this is mandatory, especially in in the past couple or three years, uh, how to deal with the death and the heart hearing, how to deal with canine encounters, how to deal, for example, with 
uh, incidents with people from other races and backgrounds. We train on this and it's mandatory. Otherwise, you will lose your police license if you don't take that training. It's part of your continuing education, if you would say. But when your demand for improvement is on the expense of destroying our country and terrorizing businesses and burning them down, and when you demand, demand for justice by taking the, away the due process, the right for due process for anybody, civilian or law enforcement or a professional, you take that away from them and you judge them and you throw them under the bus, so to speak, just so he can, uh, uh, so he can capitalize on your agenda, like day, DAs and mayors and, and all that, that's what they're doing so they can, uh, uh, so that can help them with their elections. But if that was them, if that was you in that position, you're not going to want that to happen to you or to your loved ones. A qu an example, I was out with a youth program one day and we were talking about this very topic. And then the, the, one of, the, one of the, the youngsters said, well, did you see that police officer and what he did? I said, well, what did you see in the video? He, and he mentioned the part where he was delivering uh, uh, defensive tactics on that individual to, uh, to subdue him, to get him in handcuffs. And I said, well, and the way he described it was pretty much what's being said out there, police brutality and he was beating him for no reason. I said, well, did you watch the, the video from the beginning? And he said, no. I said, I said, let me ask you a question. You know me for a while now, and I've been friends with you for, for a while. What do you think if somebody said that that was me in the video? What if that clip that you just saw, those five seconds or 10 seconds, was me? And he said, no way. I don't believe that you will ever do that. I said, exactly the same thing. Other people will say the same thing about that other officer. So why are we judging people just because we don't know them? It, does, it means that we can run passes on them and pass judgments. That is not fair. Politicians are capitalizing on this. The, every one of them that I know of, that we see now on, on TV, are capitalizing on this and they're trying to gain their, their political agenda. They're trying to increase their political agenda on the expense of those that they, uh, that, that, that those who protect and those who serve, which is not fair. And we are telling people what they want to do or hear, or do we want to tell you the truth? I'd rather tell you the truth even if you're not going to like it. When attacks on police officers are done in the name of justice, how is that justice? When killing in the name, when killing the same police officers who would give their lives to save yours and your loved ones, when does that become normal? When the court of public opinion rules over the court and the government, when people demand abolishing and defusing or defunding uh, law enforcement agencies, how is, how is the country going to run without police? When the parents teach their children that we are the bad guys, that law enforcement is the bad guys, and they will shoot you dead on your way back to school or from school. When did this ever, ever, ever happen in the history of America? When? Not one time. Why is it happening now? Why are we teaching our children that right now? When parents teach their children to run away from the police instead of running to them for help. And recently I've seen when I approach a kid, you know, to high five or something like that, the parents pull them away from us because we are labeled now as the bad guys. But it doesn't matter. You call 911, we will still show up. You call 911 and say you're, you need help, we will still be out there. So the one thing I would like to ask is, listen from our perspective first. When the protector becomes the victim and we are okay with that, how did that ever happen? When imams, when religious leaders, when nonprofit organizations are passing judgments on things that they're not in, when they're passing judgments on uh, things that they see on TV, short clips, and not the whole story, and they pass their judgments on that. <clears throat> the same people that teach us and they try to embed this verse in our, in our minds and hearts, that if somebody comes up to you with certain news, then make sure then why aren't you, why aren't we as a community, as a whole, are not making sure of exactly what's going on before we rush into conclusion? Why are we rushing into conclusion first and then ask questions later? This is the kind of fuel that adds to the fire and this is the kind of fuel that burns our country and makes us go down. Instead of being a top prayer or top first world country, we're becoming other than that. <clears throat> Legislators, and the press try to shame us every day. And they try to make us become the sheep instead of the sheepdogs. Meaning the protectee instead of, or the vulnerable instead of the, the ones that protect.
these anti-police movements are not helping. And those politicians and those DAs that only want to get votes so they can remain in office are feeding and capitalizing on them at our expense, at your expense. Because when people go and start burning down police cars and shoot police officers, isn't that your tax dollar? Isn't that your neighbor? Isn't that somebody that you know, somebody that your kids play soccer, or soccer with or softball or whatever with? Isn't that that, that case? Is that person, that same person that you greet in the morning, the same person that would come to you for help, isn't he that? And then when, you, when people go out and they terrorize and they, they, the, the, the community and they burn down businesses and police cars, isn't that your tax dollar being burned away? Now, the question is, is there wrongdoing by certain few? Yes. But this is not the way that we respond to these. Hundreds of millions of contacts every year by law enforcement in this country alone. Do they all result in deadly force? Do they all result in, result in citations or arrest or somebody going to jail? No. The answer is absolutely not. There is some when necessary. That's why there is law and that's why there's order and that's why we come in, we step in to protect you. They don't all come out come up with a negative uh, in, uh, encounter. Those officers who do wrong and break the law, they are charged, though they'll be prosecuted. And there are 900, over 900,000 police officers active in the US as we speak. Imagine if they were all defunded, then who's gonna run the streets and who's gonna run the, the community? Drug dealers and bank, gang bangers, street gangs? We're already at fight with them, we're already battling them, we're already at war with them. Do you, do you wanna let them handle situations? Or civilians that have no, don't have the mindset or the training or the experience in how to deal with situations? Is that what people want? I would ask everybody to reconsider this. And the other thing that I would like to, to mention, and then I conclude with this, is that I have spoken recently with a lot of people that have gone and protested peacefully, and, and, and we had a dialogue about what's going on, and they only gave me the answer, or don't give me their opinion from one side. But when they heard my side, they heard my perspective, totally changed their ideology. And they started looking at it from both perspectives, which is something that I would like to call upon every person, starting with community leaders, imams, pastors, priests, any religious figures, whether you have any kind of affiliation with your community, you're a leader or you're in position to have a say-so in your neighborhood. I ask all of you to go out to your local law enforcement agency and request what's called a ride-along. Ride with an officer for a few hours or a couple of days or a couple of hours. That will change your perspective and you will come out of that patrol car a different person because you've seen things that you've never seen before and you see them now from a different perspective the perspective of somebody who's the one who's taken fire I would ask every one of you to go out there and do this and 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 this will help you relate information to your community to your church members to your message members and to your neighborhood members that this is not what the, what the media is showing is what not what what's not right it's not what's right this is what I've seen and this is what is going on. Now, the few that are doing bad, whether they're teachers, uh, imams, priests, whatever, anybody that in any profession, doctors, whatever it is, they don't represent the vast majority of people. Everybody that, like I said in that code of ethics, every person is responsible for his own actions, not for everybody else's. I don't, the, the thing that happened in Minnesota or happened everywhere, anywhere else, does not represent me or does not represent any other officer. The person, one person messes up, then that's on him, only on him. I would like to ask everyone, listen to the entire story, watch all the videos, listen to all accounts, ask questions, do it peacefully. The second thing is, I urge everyone to contact their local, local law enforcement and do a ride along. It will change your perspective. And the other thing is, uh, uh, the, and the reason for that is, I want you all to take it from the source where it happens, where the action happens. I'll call you Hada, wa astaghfirullah al-Azim ali wa lakum, ud'u Allah wa antum mukunnuna bil ijabah, fair fawzam mustaghfirin.